Hey guys, Janik here for Cinecom.net and welcome back to another Copycat Friday. Or just welcome if it's your first time. Now let's talk about something serious. Do you guys believe in aliens? And I mean real aliens. Not some single-celled organism hiding in the frost layer of Neptune. I mean real intelligent beings ready to take over the world. Do you believe in them? Well, I think there's other life besides us. I find it hard to believe that we are the smartest beings in the universe. Anyways, let's get even smarter and let's create this super iconic alien abduction effect. We first got the idea from Drake, who had a similar effect in a video he posted recently. Then after some searching, we also found this super funny music video from DJ Shadow, where a man fights off an alien abduction which eventually brought us to making this video. So let's stop wasting time and get into it. So guys, before we start with the post-production, we first need to shoot our footage. So let's do that. The first important thing is that you shoot when it's dusk, dawn, or just dark. This will make the light be more visible in the end of the effect. Then a second important thing is that you have a strong overhead light that can be bundled into a beam. We use our Aperture 300D with a Fresnel hat. This will mimic the light of the UFO on our actor and the floor. Okay, now that we have the setup, let's make our shots. Four shots to be exact. The first one is going to be an empty shot of our scene. The second shot is also an empty shot, but this time with the overhead light in it. Then for the third and fourth shot, we can bring in our actor. And now we are going to take two shots of our actor. One for the movement of his upper body and a second one of the movement of his legs. In post-production, we can combine these two shots and make ourselves float. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. First, we need to make the shots. So for the third shot, let your actor stand under the overhead light and add some tracking markers on his legs. He can start acting and looking up to the light. On a certain point, he needs to act like he's being pulled up in the air. So let him wave around with his arms and upper body, but try to let him stand on the same spot for the entire time. Then for the fourth and last shot, we are going to lift our actor up in the air so that he can move his legs around. So let your actor stand in the exact same spot as before and place two chairs next to him. At first, your actor can just stand still still but then let your actor lift himself up using the chairs next to him. Do this slowly, recreating the effect of being pulled up by the alien beam. Once in the air, he can swing his legs around, but of course, don't overdo it. And that's it for our footage. Since we filmed at dawn, the light changes super fast. So we didn't want to lose time with moving a green screen around. This is why we'll be rotoscoping our actor out. And with the new rotor bridge and after effects, this shouldn't give us any problems. No problem, no problem. Lorenzo, I'm stuck in a spaceship and they want to cut me open to find out more about the human species? Well, I told them, I've got something better for you. Storyblocks video. Because on Storyblocks video, you can find high quality 4K stock clips about people while they're doing all of their activities like celebrating or being with their family or having a, a walk in the park. And also they could learn more about our planet because of all the beautiful nature shots. Or machineries, they can find out how our factories work. Or even better, they can find out about animals something else than human species. We have also fish and everything. So much stuff they can learn from Storyblocks video. And then I told them how we have this coronavirus currently. So I showed them some 3D footage. Unfortunately, they didn't believe me because it looked CGI. But then I said, well, you can't really see it with your naked eye. So that's why it's CGI. And then I showed them more like overlay effects like mist and smoke. They didn't believe all of that because it was just fake. But I said, yeah, that's the whole part of it. You know, you can download these and you can put these on other videos to do fake, to have something like muzzle flashes and all. And you know, when I really blew their mind, when I showed them After Effects templates, they didn't believe me that you can just make a photo slideshow with one click or having your own logo appear. There are hundreds of thousands of video assets that you can download, unlimited. But then you might be thinking, Jordy, why are you running? Well, they didn't believe me. They thought it was super expensive and that they needed to exchange their spacecraft for a Storyblock subscription. And I said, no, no, it's just one very small single price per year. That's it, no extra fees, no nothing. They just didn't believe me. But you know why? That's because they didn't click the first link in the description down below. So guys, you can go check it out. Click the link down below and find it out yourself. It's true. Just one, one price per year, that's it. No extra fees, unlimited downloads. Oh man, I hate aliens. <laughs> mm, I hope they aren't doing dirty things to Jordy. 
Eh, let's make our effect an After Effects. First, let's place our empty shot in the timeline, and on top of that we can place our empty shot with only the light. On this layer we are going to create an ellipse mask around the light, cutting it out. Of course, feather it a bunch. Next up, let's import our leg movement shot, and again on top of that the upper body movement shot. The first thing we can do is track the motion of the upper body movement. Go to the tracker panel and select track motion. Set the tracking points on the markers you have on the actor's legs and let's track the movement. Once After Effects is done, link the tracking data to a new null object and for now we are done with the tracking. Then it's time to rotoscope our actor. First the upper body movement clip. So this means we're only going to rotoscope the upper body. Obviously. Now I'm not going to go in detail about rotoscoping as we have an older video where we go super in depth about this function. I'll leave a link to that in the description below. So now we have our upper body singled out. Let's do the same with the lower body and single out his legs, leaving us with a cut out Jordi in two separate parts. Now let's use the tracking data to link them all together. So go to the beginning of your timeline and parent the leg layer to the null object. If needed, you could always scale and position the upper body layer to match it better with the legs. Once you have done this, parent the null object to the upper body. This will link everything together and if you now move the upper body clip, the legs will follow. Plus, with the tracking data, they also have the same motion as the upper body. So now we can just animate the position of the upper body so that Jordi slowly starts floating up in the sky. It's super easy and with the legs kicking around it looks so much more realistic. Okay, we already have something that looks super cool. But we are going to make it even better by adding an extra beam effect. So first create a white solid layer. On this layer we can add the fractal noise effect. Within the effect we are going to increase the scale of the noise. And then we are going to animate the evolution for some extra motion and the offset turbulence to make everything go up. Then let's add another effect to it called CC Light Rays. Here move the center of the effect all the way up until you have a beam that you like. Then adjust some settings. Increase the intensity and the radius, decrease the warp softness and also adjust the transfer mode to none. Last. Also add a fast box blur effect to the white solid and increase the blur radius. And once done, you can fine tune the beam some more. Duplicate the white solid layer and from this layer you don't need to change much in the effect settings. Just take the fractal noise effect and drag it underneath the light rays and the fast blur effect. This way the fractal noise effect will be applied last, bringing back the noise. Now if you want, you can always fine tune the light rays intensity to make your beam wider or smaller. And, of course, you can also play around with the settings of the fractal noise. It's completely your choice. Also, if you want, you can add some extra depth and you can add a CC light sweep effect or maybe two or three, whatever you want. We are almost there, guys. Stay with me just a little bit longer. Duplicate the white solid layer one more time and remove every effect from it. Take your pen tool and draw a cone-like mask on it. Feather it a bunch and set the opacity to around 15. And now let's start blending everything together. Select the first two white solids and pre-comp them together. Next, set the blending mode of the new pre-comp layer to screen. Now take the last white solid layer and set the blending mode for this to add. Then let's create a mask on the pre-comp layer. Select it and create a feathered mask so that the light of the beam stops on the floor. And voila, we have our awesome beam. Now, what is missing? Well, the shadow of course. So let's add that small detail. Just take your upper body clip and duplicate it. Remove the position animation and pre-comp the duplicate layer. Place it just above your two empty clips and add a fill effect to it. Set the color to dark blue. Next, let's place the shadow on the correct place. First, flip it vertically. Then smoosh the height and stretch the width of the clip. Position it at the feet of the actor. And lastly, add a fast box blur effect to the shadow and blur it a little. Now duplicate the shadow one more time and increase the blur for the duplicate. For the blending modes of the shadow, set the top one to multiply and the bottom one to soft light. Oh yeah, one final thing, animate the opacity, scale, and blurriness for both shadows. The higher your actor is floating, the more blurry and the bigger the shadow becomes. And that's it. It's the end of the day and I'm going home. Put, put. <laughs> oh, come on, not again. Oh, oh. Guys, easy, easy, guys, whoa, easy, come on.
Guys, can't you come a little bit down with your UFO? This is really high. Time for Janek Fun Fact Fountain! What was the first movie with aliens in it? No, it was a movie from 1902 called A Trip to the Moon. In this super old movie, a few gentlemen take a rocket and fly to the moon. And of course, here they encounter an alien which can apparently do very, very weird tricks with his legs. Okay. But that was it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you Storyblocks Video for the support. And like always, stay creative. Oh yeah, one final thing. Animate the opacity, scale and blurriness for the 